All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lore Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host here, Eric Rodriguez, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We talk, excuse me, everything professional wrestling, uh, potential storylines, uh, backstage, action that's happening inside and outside of the ring. So you can always count on me, your boy E, always, uh, you know, you know, bring you know, filling you into the loop. You know, obviously, you know, I know times are, uh, you know, lives are busy. So if you if you have an hour to dedicate your time to professional wrestling, I'm going to give you guys the hottest news. Basically, you know, all things professional wrestling. So, um, yeah, definitely love that. But um, before I move on any further, I want to remind you guys to use the tips and donations link at the gsmcpodcast.net. Shoot me your questions, comments, and concerns. Give me your projected storylines in terms of WWE. Do you think Sami Zayn will be will uh, come out Intercontinental Champion, um, leaving um, a Money in the Bank? Obviously, you know, hit up the hit up the chat. Don't be too shy. Hit up the chat. But uh, yeah, honestly, guys, your uh, your opinion means a lot to us. It really does help the show. Here at the GSMC Sports Network, we do love a lot of peace, love, and uh, positivity. Remember to uh, Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show and also follow the show. Also, the network, the GSMC Sports Network. And once again, the link is at the GSMC Podcast on it. So, guys, let's go ahead and jump on into this. Our Women's Wrestling Power Rankings. Let's do this. Who will be number one? Will your favorite wrestler be number one? Who knows? If you have any, you know, suggestions, uh, let me know. At number 10, at number 10, I have Athena. The Ring of Honor, um, you know, Women's World Heavyweight Champion is number 10. She kind of, you know, I think that her booking could be better. I know that Ring of Honor has recently kind of midged, kind of kind of merged with uh, you know, all elite wrestling, so I'm, in, I'm I'm anticipating like more people coming after her title, but it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Um, I want to see her in action more. I do. She's a great wrestler. Obviously, I know her from you know WWE. She was Ember Moon from NXT. Had so much success there. Obviously, didn't really work out uh, due to poor booking, poor creative choices by WWE, but. Athena's she's she's a goddess. She's the goddess of wrestling. She's amazing. And, uh, you know, I just want to see better bookings, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, her would be pretty awesome. At number nine, I got Billy Starks. Back to back, you got MIT. Billy Starks is the, you know, Ring of Honor Women's World te- Television Champion. She's done really, really well for herself ever since she kind of had, a, you know, it was in that tournament. Uh, where I think she defeated Queen Aminata. I think uh, it was Queen Aminata. But, um, you know, definitely love seeing her in this position. Definitely love seeing her on TV more because I feel like she is, she's not the heel. She's not the heel, although she is kind of aligned with the Ring of Honor World of Women's Champion, um, you know, Ember Moon or Athena. But I like her. I feel like she's going to do great. Honestly, it'd be kind of cool to kind of see her challenge her uh, her uh, fellow uh, MIT kind of member. So uh, I don't know. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. All right, at number eight, I got Jade uh, Cargill. I have Jade on this list. I don't have Bianca because Bianca recently lost her chance to um, you know show up at the Money in the Bank match at a Money in the Bank. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how that kind of works out, but. Um, of course, Chelsea Green, you know, the ultimate opportunistic kind of woman here. Kind of reminds me of a female version of, like, Edge. If he had, like, you know, if they're trying to base a run off of, you know, any WWE superstar, I feel like Chelsea Green would be perfect as, like, that Edge kind of material. But uh, also, Jade, Jade, um, you know, they're not WWE tag team champions anymore. So she's going to assert herself finally, finally, finally into WWE singles competition. And I have nothing but high hopes. I feel like she's going to win. Uh, I, th- I think next week she's actually in the Money in the Bank qualifier. I think she's going to win. I think she's going to win. You're going to see Bianca Belair. May you know try to be there, try to be supportive for her, uh, for her tag team uh, teammate, for her former fellow uh, WWE World uh, uh, t- Women's Tag Team title holder. But I feel like Bianca Belair is kind of heading for. Uh, I feel like she's kind of heading for a heel. It'd be kind of perfect for her to be heel. 
because Jade is like still kind of new to the company, so WWE don't really know how Jade Cargill is. I feel like if she does go heel, be like, okay, that kind of figures. You know, she came from AEW. She does, you know, she doesn't have really like any connection to the WWE universe, fans or backstage or fellow, you know, peers. So um, I think it's perfect. I think it'd be kind of perfect to kind of have uh, Bianca turn on Jade. I see Jade. I don't know if I want to see her holding the briefcase. But I think I've, you know, I kind of see, I loved how, she, I, I, I love how she makes it back into the, you know, into singles competition here. So, um, yeah. All right. At number seven, we have Willow of Nightingale, the former New Japan Professional Wrestling Women Strong Champion, the former AEW TBS Champion. Um, she's been cutting a lot of good promos. She's been cutting a lot of good promos. Uh, obviously she's kind of heading toward her second win from the Owen Hart Cup in terms of the women's division and for a chance to uh, challenge the champion at all in. I like Willow. I feel like she would be a perfect match for Tony Storm. Uh, obviously next week you're going to see her fight against Chris Statlander. It's, it's, it's big. It's going to be big. Honestly, I feel like Willow deserves a lot in terms of like professional wrestling booking. She's a champion. More or less, she's kind of a role model. And I'm not trying to steal that away from Bailey. Like, oh, the role model, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I just feel like she does really, really well in the limelight. And right now, she's kind of taking a step back. So, kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. At number six, I got Mercedes Monet. Mercedes Monet so far has proved herself to be a fighting champion, which is something that I was kind of worried about due to the fact that it took so long for AEW to finally bring her into the ring. Um, but no, she's good. She's good. She's fighting Stephanie Vakura over, uh, you know, against, uh, at, uh, AEW Forbidden Door. So I don't really see Mercedes Monet losing this championship, especially after you kind of beat Willow Nightingale so soon, in my opinion. But, you know, I, I, I like Mercedes. I do like her. She does kind of have the tendency to cut the same promo over and over again. But she's on this list. She's number six. So I have nothing, you know, throwing flowers at Mercedes Monet. All right, number five, I got the WWE Women's Champion, Bailey. Bailey, so far, you got to love Bailey. I love Bailey because, you know, two things. I love, first and foremost, you kind of have her representing the brand that you don't really have Ray Ripley anymore. And I know that Ray Ripley's on Monday Night Raw, but I'm just talking in terms of uh, the division itself. You don't have Ray Ripley anymore. You don't have Becky Lynch. You don't have uh, Charlotte Flair. So the only kind of veteran that you kind of have on your side here, here is Bailey. And Bailey, you know, I don't think she's a transitional champion or like a bridge champion. I don't know how you guys like to kind of refer it to. But um, is she going to lose to Nia Jax at SummerSlam? I think so. But Bailey can just pull a win out of nowhere. The fans love her. Obviously, I've, you know, kind of, kind of advocated for her to be more or less in the baby face. I didn't like her as a heel. Now that she is full baby face, she is the WWE Women's Champion. I don't, honestly, I don't think she is. She's going to go anywhere soon. And I love, and I know a lot of people, you know, you people are going to be like, you know, Eric, you know, you might be drinking the, the Bailey Kool-Aid too much. Nia Jax is going to beat her at SummerSlam. And by all means, I agree with that. And I kind of thought that to myself, but Honestly, I don't see it. I feel like for the WWE Women's Championship to kind of be on like a nice, like kind of like, you know, kind of steeple to make it prestigious, you have to have Haley. Haley. You kind of have to have Bailey hold the belt. You have to, definitely. At number four, of course, I have the WWE NXT Women's Champion, Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez, she's overcome Every single obstacle in her way in terms of WWE NXT. You saw her win the match when she tagged team with Lola Vice last Tuesday. And then she, you know, sent a message out to Lola. Be like, look, like, don't get too comfortable, girl. We're going to fight. And then Lola was kind of like, you know, she attacked her. She's like, why do you, like, what the hell? Like, why do you have to do this? And then Roxanne Perez, she's all business. She's all business. Definitely a good spot. Definitely a great way to kind of have the WWE NXT Women's Champion uh, should kind of be represented here. Excuse me, uh, with uh, Roxanne Perez. So, 
Definitely throwing flowers at Roxanne Perez. At number three, I got Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace has been my number one for about a month now. But I feel like she's kind of made it down to number three because you don't really have anybody on TNA to ultimately fight her. Like, I, I, I don't even know if that, you know, I don't even know if that makes sense. But Jordan Grace, she's, you know, Yatin and Paxley come from WWE NXT, which I think WWE and TNA kind of botched in that. I wish there was more of a, you know, a competitor to kind of, um, you know, kind of help Jordan Grace's streak as TNA Knockouts champion, kind of be a little more, you know, be a little more dominant. But I don't know. I just... She lost against Roxanne Perez, you know, given that it was Ash by Elegance and also Tatum Paxley, you know, kind of getting involved there. But I feel like uh, it's she's not declining. She's not declining. She will always be this dominant champion. And it's to the point where, like, sometimes, like, you know, I don't want to say a boring champion. She's not a boring champion. She, you know, you just kind of know that she's going to win. And sometimes, like... That can take the fun out of, uh, you know, any professional wrestling talk. If you're going to, if you're talking about someone that's be like, oh, they're going to win anyway. So why does it even matter? Like, you're just like, oh, you're right. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our last two. At number two, I got Nia Jax. Like I said before, I don't know how far Nia Jax is going to go, but I know her future really is really, really bright. She's the queen of the ring. Um, I'm 50-50 right now with her beating Bailey. Will she represent the WWE Women's Championship like Bailey has? It's going to be hard to get the championship offered. That's the reason why I'm kind of thinking to myself that maybe they won't give it a strap. Although I feel like after so much time in WWE, Nia Jax damn well deserves it. But, you know, obviously you kind of have to book matches that are um, kind of realistic here. I don't think anybody could really defeat Nia Jax. Besides maybe like someone like Becky Lynch or Charlotte Flair or Bianca Belair or Jade Cargill. But if that's the kind of way you want your champion to kind of shape the industry, to shape the women's division, by all means, do it. Why not? Give it a shot. Like, who knows? Maybe I could be talking out of my arse at this point. At number one, of course, back to back, I have Tony Storm, the timeless Tony Storm on AEW, making the AEW women's division so much fun. Making it so much fun to watch. You have Mariah Mary and, of course, you have Mina Shirakawa that are going to, you know, they're going to have their, uh, you know, they're going to have their hash out at AEW Forbidden Door. But, um, you know, I got to love Tony Storm. Got to love her promos. The best thing about Tony Storm is her promos, you know, and I'm not, you know, obviously it's not a, it's not an indictment of her at all, but her promos also the way she holds herself up and the way she fights and just like her persona, like you can't break that character. You can't break the way Tony Storm is because that's, it's magic. It's magic. Well, guys, do not go anywhere. Uh, our next segment, we're going to jump. We we did the women's power rankings, and now we're going to do the men's. So, hey, do not go absolutely anywhere.